So what is a cricothyroidotomy? When would you do it? And how would you do it? That's what we're gonna go over today. You can see a cricothyroidotomy has been performed on this patient. It's in place and secure. So what I've done here is I've made a way for air to travel in to this tube, bypass the mouth, upper throat, posterior pharynx, any trauma, any blood, any issues that's going on here. I've bypassed all that and I've made an opening to the outside. So now I can breathe for my patient or my patient can breathe on his own through this tube. So in general, there's four different ways that we can help get air moving in and out and help that patient's airway. Really from least invasive to most invasive. Number one is we can put an NPA in, which is a nasopharyngeal airway. This is the one from North American Rescue. It comes in a pre lube pack. We're gonna put that in either nostril. What that's gonna do is go down and keep that soft palate up so the patient can keep breathing on their own. Uh, number two is something called a supraglottic airway. There's a lot of different types of supraglottic airway, but the idea is that we take a tube, we place it down into your mouth, into the back of your throat. It occludes your esophagus, but allows air to come in and out of your trachea. Number three is intubation. So that's where we take an endotracheal tube and we place it through the patient's mouth into their trachea inflate a balloon to keep it secure, and then we're able to breathe for that patient or allow that patient to breathe through the endotracheal tube. Number four, and the most invasive, is if there's a problem with the upper airway. So maybe there's trauma, maybe there's a lot of blood, uh, maybe there's severe burns, or maybe it's just a very difficult airway and we're not able to get it through one of the other three methods. Then what we'll do is we'll cut a hole in the patient's neck, we'll go through their cricothyroid membrane, and we'll place a small dedicated tube that goes into the trachea and allows for air to circulate from the lungs to the outside and back and forth. How do you do a cricothyroidotomy? Hey everyone, Doc Miles at North American Rescue. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ballpoint pen, you're gonna remove the contents, and then you're gonna make a sharp stabbing motion in the patient's throat. Just kidding, never do that. What we are gonna do is we're gonna use a dedicated cricothyroidotomy kit called the backpack, and this is a bougie-aided cricothyroidotomy pack from North American Rescue. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do in this procedure is I'm gonna open up my contents of my kit and get it laid out and tested in the right order that I want. So I've already hooked up my syringe to the balloon. I test that balloon just to make sure it looks good. We're holding air, and then I'm gonna pull the air back out of it. I've got all my contents laid out. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my key landmarks. So I'm gonna find the cricothyroid membrane, which you can see in this illustration above me. So the cricothyroid membrane is a small, thin membrane that really feels like a little soft spot right between your cricoid cartilage and your thyroid cartilage. So I've found that. I'm gonna use my non-dominant hand to hold that. I will use my swab stick to clean the area. I'm gonna take my scalpel. I've identified my landmark. I'm going to do one solid motion, center line down. As I see it start to open, I'm gonna make a sideways motion, flip. After I've made my horizontal incision, I'm gonna dispose of my blade. I'm gonna take my cry cook. Some people like to pull up towards the top of the head, some like to pull down into the trachea, and I'm gonna pull upward pressure. Next thing I'll do is I'll take the bougie end of my cricothyroid kit. I'll place that bougie inside of the trachea, remove my cric hook since I'm inside now. I feel I have free motion going in and out of the trachea. I don't see any tenting of skin on either side of the neck, indicating that I'm not in the trachea and I'm going out through skin. Once I'm sure that my bougie is in place, I'm gonna glide the cricothyroid tube over until it's seated. I'm then going to remove my bougie from. Now at this point, I'm gonna blow this up with about eight to 10 mLs of air. Check my balloon, make sure I'm inflated, feels good. 
At this point, I would grab a BVM and I would give my casualty a breath or two if they're not breathing on their own or see if I see spontaneous rise and fall of the chest indicating that they're breathing through their trach just fine. I'm also gonna wanna confirm that if I have an entitled CO2 detector like an EMMA, I'm gonna wanna put that on and make sure I'm in the right spot, listen to lung sounds, and of course, reevaluate my casualty as I go. Finally, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my tracheal tube holder and I'm going to secure that into place. All right, my cricothyroidotomy is in place. I've got it secured, my bulb is inflated, and my casualty is either breathing through that tube or I'm breathing for my casualty Again, monitoring and rechecking at all times. Remember, there's multiple ways to do a cricothyroidotomy, so follow your medical director's instruction and your local protocols.